Well, Codex Alimentary is the most important multilateral organization dealing with food safety and uh, uh, fair practice in food trade. Uh, Codex has a strong responsibility because Codex uh, develops standards to protect human health. So, uh, when, we, when we are getting our breakfast, our lunch or our dinner daily, Codex is in because uh, the food that we are consuming come from some industry, some production area which is being covered by the standards in terms of uh, protection of health, avoiding, for example, problems of contamination, prob problems of uh, pesticide residues uh, above the limit established by, by the Codex Alimentarius, etc. So, uh, the organization deals with very key elements to protect the human health and to establish fair practice in food trade. Uh, since 1995, when the Uruguay Round was finished, uh, Codex uh, became the reference for the, the World Trade Organization when we have some kind of dispute in the area of food safety and fair practice in food trade. One very important thing, it's a very inclusive uh, organization because we have 189 members. We have observers, more than 200 observers. It's very transparent. There is one uh, step procedure that uh, gives for the members the, 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 the possibility to discuss and to, to have a practical standards that can be applied. And, of course, is based also in consensus building. So, uh, sometimes it takes a little bit uh, long to finalize one standard, but uh, uh, we have a, a very positive result in doing that because we can have in the standard the necessary scientific basis, which score for the, the standard, and also a extensive debate and discussion uh, that, uh, which can give for the standards, uh, I could say, a balanced uh, situation to help the different regions of the world. Examples related to maximum residual levels of pesticides or uh, maximum levels of uh, veterinary drugs. The Codex established these levels and when farmers or uh, producers uh, are, 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 working, are, are, are working the field, uh, they are following these, these uh, standards trying to have good agricultural practices to guarantee that, that that limits will be in the final product. Another example is, for example, when we, we are uh, preparing products in the, standard, in, in the industry, sorry, uh, we have one specific committee, Codex is composed of different committees, uh, which deals with inspection uh, for products and gives to the government and to the private sector the necessary elements to have some uh, practices within the industry that can guarantee the quality uh, of the product. We have different kinds of committees, as I, as I mentioned. We have some horizontal committees, as for example, the Codex Committee on Food Hygiene, the Codex Committee on Certification and Inspection of Imported and Exported Foods. Uh, we have some uh, commodity committees, as for example, committees for pulse, cereals, uh, fresh fruit and vegetables, etc. So each committee are working on these uh, duties in order to guarantee the public health and the fair practice in public trade, avoiding uh, 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 barriers that can uh, create problems in terms of trade. FAO and WHO, uh, they are planning to, to have a, a, a conference on food safety uh, next year, and I think it's a, a, a key moment uh, to strengthen uh, food safety worldwide due to the need that we have to guarantee uh, food safety for, for, for the consumers. We have more than uh, 400,000 cases of foodborne disease uh, per year, so Codex is one key instrument to to avoid that, you know, and uh, for us it will be, of course, an, an honor to participate and to contribute in this uh, big conference that we will have uh, next year. Uh,
but uh, sponsored by FAO and WHO. So food safety is something that affects us all every day. Every time we eat or, or drink something, then we want to know that the food we're eating or the food we're preparing or giving to our friends and family is safe. And so behind that, there's a whole load of people working, people in the industry, people in the public sector who uh, enforce standards, and behind everything is Codex, which is the international body that sets the standards. Well, the main thing that Codex does when it meets, when it meets as the Commission, which is the, the senior body every year, is to agree standards. There are literally hundreds of Codex standards, some of them for uh, the quality of different commodities, some of them relating to, to food safety. So this week we've looked at standards as diverse as a standard for, for, for quinoa, to, to standards for methyl mercury, which is contaminant in fish, to standards for residues of pesticides uh, and veterinary medicines in food. Literally dozens of new standards to add to the hundreds that already exist and that are there as the basis for protecting people's health. Well, if we look forward, um, we can see new challenges on the horizon. Most people are aware of the threat of antimicrobial resistance and Codex has a task force that's been established to establish, to update the code of practice for people operating in the food chain to help guard against um, the amplification of antibiotic resistance through the food chain and also to develop new guidelines for monitoring so we know more precisely what's going on in the food chain. Then we look at other issues that everyone will be aware of, for example, climate change, because we know that climate change will have an impact on food, where it can be grown, the environmental contaminants that might be present in food. So we need to understand those impacts and then make sure that the standards we have are still relevant. حقيقة خلال وجود هذا الأسبوع في اجتماع الدورة ال 41 للدستور الغذائي استطعت أن ألتقي العديد من المشاركين والذين يمثلون كافة القطاعات من القطاع الخاص إلى القطاع العام إذا المجتمع المدني وقد لفتني ماذا ينتظرون من الكودكس ماذا ما هي الأهمية التي يترقبونها وأن مواصفات الكودكس أصبحت إلى حد ما هي المرجع إلى حد ما الوحيد في العالم وهم لا يؤكدون سلامة الغذاء طبعا أمر مفروغ منه ولكن ما أيضا لفتني هو أن يريدون الدستور الغذائي من أجل النزاهة في التجارة من أجل التجارة العادلة وهذا ملفت بالنسبة للقطاع الخاص ربما لم يستطع زميلي لم تسألوا عن استراتيجية الدستور الغذائي فأنا أود أن ألفت الانتباه إلى أننا الآن نعمل على إعداد الاستراتيجية الدستور الغذائي للأعوام 2020-2025 وإن شاء الله ستكون استراتيجية واعدة وستخلق تغييرا في الوضع فوتسيبتي is a very important thing especially for food industry because food industry need to produce a food for the consumer. So they have a responsibility to give assurance to the consumer that the food product they produce and they distribute it for the consumer is in the safe condition. Uh, comply with the safety uh, standard and also quality standard. That when the Cotex standard is very important for them to refer and to make uh, uh, reference, a uh, guidance for them in producing the food product for the consumer. Not only the consumer at their nationality, but also if they're doing the export, that's the uh, more important role of Codex standard. Actually, when we're doing the food processing and we have a food safety standard, that can only be assured by assuring, you know, uh, starting from the farm, until the handling, uh, post harvest, and then uh, storage, and then processing, and up to the consumer. So we uh, use the term of from farm to fork, or from farm to table approach. So you cannot just focusing on one uh, point of the food production chain, but you need to consider all of the uh, aspect of the food chain, starting from farm aspect to the consumer aspect. Yes, especially uh, for developing country, the Codex standard is very important because many developing countries rely on the international trade, 
of agricultural product, fishery product, and also food product. So by having a codex standard, then they have some kind of reference to, uh, to, to be achieved to make sure that their international trade, their export and import uh, uh, has not been compromised or something. 